confidence, which you, you get rejected. You work instead of having a cocktail. The lavish one. You know, some of the solutions. To sort of be the or even though, you know, hopefully set up a neighborhood so easily. So that's very important. Perhaps you and your Valentine are planning a romantic evening at home, taking in a romantic movie, where our connoisseur of silver screen romance, cinema analyst Bill Timoney, joins us today with some recommendations. Uh, Bill, welcome. I'm thinking, Thanks, Brian. I'm thinking, Mr. You Complete Me, Jerry Maguire. Great movie. Terrific idea, Jerry Maguire. You know, uh, it's like every decade, every generation seems to have their love story, like the 70s was mm -hmm. love story, or Jerry Maguire for more the 90s, maybe the 80s was when Harry met Sally. Exactly. But I think there are so many movies out there, and people love a good, they love a good cry, they love a good romantic film, that some of the films from earlier generations have sort of faded away uh, unfairly. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to surprise a, a true lover of the romantic film oh, genre, oh. you can really seem to know your, what you're talking about if you surprise her with a couple of these. Oh, let's talk about them. Well, the first one, uh, surprisingly enough, is Dracula from 1931. A, a romance movie? A romantic movie, you might say. But, but think about it. Look at the, the current craze for the Twilight Saga mm -hmm. and the young people who love Twilight so much. Well, what's the core of that? It's not about being scared. It's about the romance between Bella and Edward. Mm -hmm. And really, the vampire mythology in cinema is about dark romances and forbidden love and all that sort of thing. Well, Dracula in 1931 was released on Valentine's Day. So in a way, you can call it, it's the first romantic film, the first Valentine's Day film. But they were doing it kind of as a dodge. There was no such thing back then as the supernatural in cinema and in theater. There was always something scary that at the end was revealed to be a guy who was trying to get uh, the, the house or, you know, the inheritance. So they always had to provide a, a climactic explanation. Well, in Dracula, they're saying, no, this is real. A vampire is an undead creature. It's an evil being, blah, blah, blah. And no one had ever done anything like that. So by releasing the film on Valentine's Day, they release it with the tagline, the strangest passion ever known. Oh, so people were kind of, it was kind of mysterious that it wasn't so, so much of a monster movie as it was about this odd romance. I want to take you down your list. You mentioned sure. uh, Brief Encounter. Brief Encounter, 1945. Noel Coward, one of the great British films of all time. It's just real simple. Don't want to tell you much about it. If you've never seen it, if your partner has never seen it, rent Brief Encounter and watch it together. It's a wonderful romantic oh, film. Okay, not too brief though. It's what, an hour and a half? Yeah, now and half. It's a regular right down feature <laughs> film, unlike Dracula, which is about 73 minutes okay. long. Okay. Roman Holiday. Roman Holiday, 1953, American made film by great filmmaker William Wyler, but it's shot in Rome. Rome is a romantic city. Gregory sure. Peck was a huge star at the time, and they made it with this very young, unknown actress named Audrey Hepburn. Gregory Peck had a complete uh, top soul, top billing in his contract, mm -hmm. but as they made the movie, he took the filmmaker aside and said, look, you better put her name up above the title too, because she's going to be a big star. And sure enough, Audrey Hepburn won the Academy Award for Best Actress that year for Roman Holiday. Wow, what an incredible story. It is. Elvira Madigan. Elvira Madigan is a film that people don't really know about today, but was incredibly important in the 19, late 1960s in this country, the Vietnam War era. Mm -hmm. It's a true story from the 19th century about these star-crossed young lovers in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, she's a member of the circus, he is a soldier in the military, and they run away together. Yes, somebody actually ran away from the circus. <laughs> um, and uh, a couple of movies have been made about it, but this one from Sweden in 67 by a guy Coming named Bo uh, Wiedemark is just a, a brilliant, beautiful movie that had an incredible effect on a lot of young men mm -hmm. and how they felt about the draft for the Vietnam War. Interesting. I don't want to say much more than that. But it also, it, the music by Mozart was used, Piano Concerto 21, that was so famous for its time that now no one says, we want to start Piano Concerto 21 and C. They say the Elvira Madigan. Interesting. There's one more on your list, A Man yep. and a Woman. Man and a Woman from uh, Claude Lelouch in the 60s from France. Very important film at the time. Anouk Ami uh, got an Academy Award nomination. The film won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film of the Year and for Best Screenplay. They made a sequel 20 years later, A Man and a Woman, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. And the male lead, Jean-Louis Trinigon, is also the star of uh, Amour, which is one of the films that is up for the Oscar this year. And I, I predict Amour is going to be a big, big oh. film at the Oscars. Okay, you heard it here first. I heard it there first. I would bet you, you'd argue that these older films perhaps are better at storytelling. Certainly they are. Well, well, when you can't, you know, wh when you can't be as explicit as contemporary cinema can be without any restrictions, sometimes you have to find more clever ways to express what you want to express. Mm -hmm. And I think that challenge very often led to more interesting filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. Here to eternity. 
Love it. Love from here to eternity. You know what I really like, though, is the remake to Last of the Mohicans with Daniel Day-Lewis and Madeline Stowe. For mm -hmm. me, that's a great romantic film. Okay, okay. Well, lots out there on the shelf. Awful lot to out there, from. sure. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Always My a pleasure. pleasure. Thanks, Brian.